Of all of these then, which one are we gonna get? This, what's it called? A Voron what? Oh, so it's a prototype. We can't get that. Oh, it just looks like a prototype because you build it yourself. Well, it kind of looks like a kid's toy, to be honest. It's tiny. I bet it's pretty cheap then. How much? Why is it so exp Oh, it's probably got loads of like extra sensors, like filament sensor, bed sensor, all this like LiDAR and extra stuff like that. Oh no, none of it. So why is it so expensive? This is the Voron V0.1, a very tiny and fairly expensive 3D printer, but also one of my favorites to actually use. The Voron V0.1 is not an early prototype like the naming suggests. It's just a small form factor, high performance, fully enclosed, high speed Core XY mini 3D printer. Before I go any further, I should let you know that my V0 is quite heavily modified. I've got on the LGX Lite extruder, a Kirigami bed, internal lights, a top hat hinge, a rear door hinge, the Bigtree Tech SKR Pico control board, an electronics cooling fan, and a modified spool holder and handle. That sounds like a lot, but fundamentally the main criteria, the main design, if you like, of the printer is actually still just the same. I think the only one of those that really changes the overall performance of the machine significantly would be the LGX Lite extruder, and we'll get onto that a little bit later on. By default, the V0 is designed to be a kind of self-sort DIY kit. So you buy all the parts from all over, different shops, wherever you can get them, and then you put the whole printer together yourself. Now, while that's definitely possible, you can do it, it works pretty well, it's doable. It's also kind of nice just to get a kit. So I got this kit from LDO Motors, who are quite well known as producing fairly high quality LDO kits, and this one was no exception. The only problem I had with the kit was probably the X axis rail. For me, it was a little bit wobbly, so the carriage could tilt forwards and backwards a very tiny bit. It was only very small, but because of the way the extruder was obviously pulling on the filament, as it kind of retracts and extrudes, it would cause it to tilt forwards and backwards a tiny little bit, and that was not great. Overall though, I was really impressed with the kit. The quality of all the parts, barring that one rail, is absolutely fantastic. Everything you need is included. They even have some documentation and wiring instructions, which is really helpful as well. All of the Voron Design 3D printers are designed to be enclosed, and therefore require ABS 3D printed parts. ABS is quite challenging to print, especially on most open 3D printers. I don't mean open source, I mean open as in not enclosed in a box. So while you can add like cardboard boxes and such to standard 3D printers, they're typically not really set up for it and the electronics can get overheated and all this kind of stuff. So the V0 is supposed to be like a getting started, very small printer that you can build as a good heated enclosed chamber to print all of the ABS parts that you would need for those larger format printers. Of course, this doesn't completely solve the problem because you do still need ABS parts to make this machine. <laughs> One of the downsides of the V0 design is the heating. And I don't mean the like hot end and bed, I mean the electronics. The fully enclosed chamber design of this 3D printer and the slight lack of insulation and cooling in the electronics area means that high temperature components in that area have a tendency to overheat. So specifically here, I'm talking about Raspberry Pi. The way I got around this is by adding a small five volt fan to the enclosure that points directly over the Raspberry Pi and that cools it reasonably well. The extruder hot end and part cooling fan on this printer is known as mini afterburner. So called because it's like the afterburner, but mini. It's actually a little bit different because Afterburner is just the cooling arrangement on the big extruders. The actual extruder itself is called clockwork. Some people don't know that, but there you go. Anyway, the point is, I didn't get on actually very well with mini afterburner. It didn't seem to work super great. Maybe my printed part tolerance was a bit off. So what I did was switch to LGX Lite, which is the extruder you can see in there. It's a kind of mini SLS 3D printed extruder from Bontech, and it works super well. One thing I would say though, is that the 3D printed parts needed to assemble this extruder, not the ones that come with it, the ones that are specifically for the V0, 
I would try and find someone that can print them in SLS. You can buy those from shops and I think you can get them from Bontech as well. You can get it as like an upgrade kit, but basically the ABS printing of that part is quite difficult because of the weird overhang support structure thing that's needed. SLS is just going to get you a nicer result. The other part of the printer that didn't really work that great for me is the Z axis. By that I mean basically the two linear rails. They're very difficult to assemble to get perfectly square and then those impossibly tight tolerances cause the bed to basically kind of jam on the linear rails as you tighten it in. Especially if your parts are not like 100% perfect, it can cause some like extra twisting and it's just not great, I think. Switching to the Kirigami bed didn't really help that, it's just the same problem. The way I've solved it so far is by basically putting soft plastic 3D printed TPU between the Kirigami bed and the rails. That means that as the bed moves up and down, those can squish and compress a tiny little bit and that allows the bed to move as needed so as to not jam up the linear rails. I think the best way to solve this, as in a change to the design for the next version of this printer, would be to switch to a single wider Z-axis rail. This would mean that you don't have to do the alignment of those two rails, so you don't get any chance of jamming. In terms of the modifications that I've installed on this printer, I would recommend doing the top hat hinge. That's really useful, although my modification itself is actually a little bit janky because it's just stuck on with tape. The internal lights, that's really good. My room is quite dark most of the time when I don't have these like video lights going. So having a little bit of extra light so you can see what's going on inside, really useful. The back door hinge, if you like, is great for doing modifications if you're going to change your control board later or I don't know. It's just useful. You just get easy access to the back once you remove the spool. I've also increased the length of the spool holder. So if you're using cardboard spools, which are extra wide compared to normal ones, it's basically a no brainer modification. It's the same spool holder basically, but just a little bit longer. So you can use full cardboard spools. Speaking of modifications, uh, you should probably check out my website. I've modified the daylight on a stick so you can have RGB and short ones, long ones, black PCBs. They look awesome. They work really well. And there's one specifically for the Voron V0 and they're dinky 170 mil size. So check that out in the link below. Like many other high performance 3D printers that are around these days, the Voron V0.1 uses Clipper which is a firmware where you have a single board computer which controls your normal control board which then in turn controls the rest of the printer. So with that you get all the normal advantages of having Clipper such as the web interface via main sale of fluid, easy firmware configuration without having to recompile the whole firmware and very easy one click kind of uploading of a print directly from the slicer. There aren't any fully configured like ready done images for using a Voron V0 at the time that I was doing this. So you do have to do a little bit of work to configure it yourself, but it's generally very easy to do. And the documentation is really very good. That being said, it looks like V0 support is coming to RattleOS fairly soonish. So if you're watching this video in the future, you may want to check that out as that will be very much pre-configured and very easy to set up. When it comes to actually doing some 3D printing, the GitHub is probably the best location for you to get some profiles for this printer. And those are for Super Slicer. If you've not used Super Slicer before, then just think Prusa Slicer, but with extra settings. The print profiles you can get are reasonably good. You might want to tune them for your specific materials and like overall design if you've slightly modified it, for example. But by and large, they're pretty good. I've not modified them much and I'm very happy with the results. I've printed over 100 hours since I've installed the Big Tree Tech Pico board, so it's 100 plus a bunch more before that. If you do want to print materials other than ABS, then the LDO Motors kit actually comes with a smooth sheet as well. I've not used it because it's mainly for printing PLA, and because I've got mine fully enclosed, it's really optimized for printing ABS, and that's what I print in it basically 24 7. Well, not 24 7, I've only done 150 hours probably total, but I use it for printing ABS, and it's blooming good at doing that. My recommendation on printers is get the smallest printer you can that prints the size parts that you need. Obviously, if you're printing parts every day that are 200 mil long, wide, whatever, this printer is not going to be suitable. But if all the parts that you print, or most of them, fit in this build volume, it's a blooming great printer for doing that. So I really like having small printers that have a big enough bed to print all the parts that I typically need. 
Couple that with its ability to do high temperature and therefore ABS, it's very lightweight hot end and extruder, so it can print super duper fast. And you would just get an amazing machine for doing prototypes, quick one offs, anything like that. That being said, it is quite an expensive printer and you do need to build it yourself. So let me know your opinions on those two things in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.